Amen. In the name of Jesus, that was Tasha Cobbs. We need a move. How many agree that we need a move? You know, I almost said happy Sabbath to everyone. What the heck? Happy Sabbath, everyone, in the name of Jesus. want to say we love you so much. And, yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for going before this pod, being this Bible study. Lord, we appreciate you, Lord God, for being who you are, for being sanctified, for being holy. And, Lord God, for teaching us the things that we need to know. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we appreciate you for being Abba Father. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in us as it is in heaven in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for this great partnership. Lord, we appreciate you, Father, for keeping us, allowing us to be kept through and in our sleep, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that we're able to rise again in the land of the living, Lord God, and proclaim your name, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just appreciate you. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Lord God, for enlightening, Lord God, myself, the ears of the listeners as well, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would give them a heart to receive in the name of Jesus, Lord, even those that come over to spectate, speculate. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for saving them, sanctifying them and filling them with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Saints, on yesterday, the problem on yesterday, the Lord began to utter out of court, in a court, holies of holies. Amen. Out of court, in a court, holies of holies. And I'm like, yes, Lord, we, 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 that's something we need to know about. Amen. And so, today, that's where we're going to walk on water. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And so, we are going to pray that everybody had a very, very, very blessed night. Hallelujah. I did, in the name of Jesus. And, uh, yeah, it's time to take the day by the horns. All right? The horns of the altar. Amen. We come in prayer. We come in singing. We come uh, in in the word. Amen. Which is our habitation as we talked on on yesterday amen uh ezekiel chapter 44 yes ezekiel chapter 44 and we're gonna start at verse one all right ezekiel 44 we're gonna start at verse one and we're gonna go through and let's read this thing together amen all right it reads like this Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary. All right. So he he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary. So the outward sanctuary would be the outer, would be the outer court. All right. So he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary. So I'm sorry for that noise out there, saints. Somebody's car is going off profusely. Maybe they're laying on their keychain. I don't know. Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looketh toward the east, and it was shut. Now, that alarm used to go off a lot. Then it stopped for a long time. And now just out of the blue, it goes off when we're going to talk about the outer court, the inner court, and the holies of holies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, they turn it off. The outer court, the inner court, and the holies of holies. Do you see this? (laughs) Well, let's continue. Okay, so... Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary. Which looking toward the east and it was shut. All right. Then said the Lord unto me, this gate shall be shut. It shall not be open. And no man shall enter in by it. Because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it, therefore 
it shall be shut. All right. Therefore, it shall be shut. It is for the prince. The prince, he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate and shall go out by the way of the same. Then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house. And I looked and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord and I fell upon my face. So he brought, he brought, he says, then he brought me the way of the north gate before the house. And I looked and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. Okay. The house of the Lord. And I fell upon my face. Verse five. And the Lord said unto me, son of man, mark well and behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears. All that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord and all the laws thereof and mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. All right. Listen to what I'm telling you concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord. And all the laws thereof. And mark well the entering in of the house. With every going forth of the sanctuary. Mark well the entrance. Verse 6. And thou shalt say to the rebellious. Even to the house of Israel. Thus said the Lord God. O ye house of Israel. Let it suffice you. Of all your abominations. All right. And that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it, even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood. And they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. Now, we know fast forwarding. We all know Jesus came because I'm sure there's a whole bunch of people out there that, are, that is side-eyeing this pot beam right now. Because you'd be surprised when I say the book of Ezekiel, people be anything in the Old Testament, people just side-eye. They side-eye. But there are things uh, that the Lord desires for us to keep. Amen. The law of Moses, we know that what the, we know what Jesus did with it. All right, we know Jesus came to fulfill the law. He didn't come to do away with it. He came to fulfill it. Amen. He came to make it more tough. Amen. But there are some things in the law of Moses uh, that the, that that we don't do as far as the killing of animals and things like this. But there are things. That we should take circumspectly into prayer and say, Lord, what do we do with this? Amen. Because the ending is the beginning and the beginning is the end. And when we're at the end of the ropes, the Lord says, now it's time to turn around and go right back to the beginning. That's where you get a ring from, a wedding ring. The wedding ring is a circular band and there is no ending in that band. This is why Jesus said, I am in my father, my father in me, me and you, we're one. There is no ending in the circle of life. There is no ending in a wedding band and there is no ending when it comes to the Lord being with us. He said, Lo, I'll be with you even until the end, which we know the end is the beginning. Amen. And for those that choose, hey, I don't want God, then he has a designated place for them. It's called the lake of fire. And this is where a person can really be absent of God. Amen. This is the only place ever, ever. This is the only ever place that a person can be absent 
from the Spirit of God. Amen. So there are those out there, you know, I don't want none of that Jesus stuff, and I don't want none of that, and, you know, just playing around with the Lord. And the Lord is saying, there's coming an appointed time where you don't have to worry about me no more. You get to, I'm going to keep giving you grace to get up, to wake up, to repent. I'm going to keep giving you mercy. But then there's going to come a day where when you, re- if you, what you're saying in your heart, and you really mean that, I'm really going to give it to you. I'm going to, this place is absent of me. You won't have to worry about me again. But see, the thing about it is when the Lord turns his face, okay, from individuals that, didn't want him no way this is when it's too late to play the game of of chase okay i'm gonna let him keep chasing me or her keep chasing me and then when they stop chasing me then i'm gonna chase them because i really like them see that's stupid when it comes to it's it's crazy to do anyway but when it comes to the spiritual realm it's just redundant you understand because the lord says i'm not playing games with you this is what you wanted you said you love me with your mouth but your heart was far from me i'm going to allow you to go to a place where you don't have to worry about me again but this is where they're having prayer meetings now uh asking the lord to come and the lord ain't studying all that jesus done went to hell one time i'm not sending my son back down there again and the lord said unto me son of man Mark well and behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord and all the laws thereof. And mark well the entering in of the house with every going forth of the sanctuary. Verse 6. And thou shalt say to the rebellious even to the house of Israel. Thus said the Lord God. So what he said was Israel is not Israel is not a uh, exempt. All right, it's not exempt even to the house of Israel. Thus said the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you with all your abominations, in that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary to pollute it, even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood. And they have broken my covenant because of your abominations. And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things. But ye have kept keeper. You have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Verse 8. Verse 8 uh, deserves a highlighting. Because the Lord plainly said Ye have not kept the charge of my holy things. And ye have not kept the charge of my holy things. But, this is what the Lord really wants us to hear after this. But, ye, it means you, have set keepers. Okay, of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. What does this mean? You, you have not kept, you have not kept uh, the charge of my holy thing. But ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourself. Hmm. What's a keeper? What is a keeper, saints? Do you know what a keeper is? When the Bible says, you have set keepers, what is that? Let's see. What is a keeper, Lord? Hmm. A person who manages or looks after something or someone. A keeper. A person who manages or looks after something or someone. Hmm. Guardian, protector, defender. These are words that um, go with the word keeper. So a keeper is maybe somebody that would keep the place uh, when you're away, when I'm away. 
a caper. Uh, another one example is a guard at a prison or a museum. Alright. A guard at a prison or a museum. Hmm. A keeper. A keeper. Have you set keepers of God's holy place and sanctuary for yourself? Are these keepers programmed to say the things that you want them to say? Are they programmed to echo you, not the word, but you, these keepers that is set in God's holy place? Are these keepers for yourself? Hmm. Keeper. The Bible says, And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. What's a keeper? Somebody that's going to be over the place while I'm gone. And a lot of times, I notice the keepers, they are really not as, they're not really that grounded. What do I mean by this? They can know the book. I didn't say they didn't know the Bible. But a lot of times the keepers, the keepers are not, they're not really grounded in God. Because most often times, if they were grounded in God, they wouldn't be a keeper. Do you understand? Why wouldn't they be a keeper? Because they wouldn't be picked to be one. Now, they might be a keeper uh, on, in prayer and, you know, but as far as you're the keeper here, I hand you the charge until I get back. Uh-uh. Because most often times, those people, those, the ones that are given the charge to keep, they've already been uh, doctrinized. They've already been brought low enough and scared enough of the main, the main one. Brought, they've been brought low enough and scared enough of the main, of, of a man. And, and, and then, then the man says, here, you keep this. Until I get back. And that is the way. That it is in the organizations. Most often times today. Most often times. This is the way it is. In organizations today. If I'm going to let you be a keeper. Of my establishment. Because the Lord said it's his. But. Well. People say it's theirs. And uh, they don't really say it out of their mouths, but they act like it's theirs. Yeah. So it's, so they believe it's theirs. So they have God's children in God's house. But because they built the place, or because they're paying the bills, they're paying the lights, and they're paying the water, this is my establishment. But they know, they have to say this is God's house, but is it? Because the Lord said, you have set keepers in my sanctuary for yourselves. Hmm. Are the keepers grounded in the word? Yeah, they know the word, but are they grounded in the word? Most often times the answer is no. They're grounded in a man. They're grounded in a woman. But they're not grounded in the word. Verse 9. Thus saith the Lord God, no stranger, okay, uncircumcised in heart. Now, I really love when, I like when he keeps saying this now. 
uncircumcised in the heart. How many of us are uncircumcised in the heart? Thus said the Lord God, no stranger uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary of of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. This explains why there's really no change. And when I speak, I'm speaking as the a majority, a majority. This is why there's hardly no change here, amen. Because the Lord has already said it, and He uh, said it pretty early on that no stranger, uncircumcised in heart, nor uncircumcised in flesh, shall enter into my sanctuary. Of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. Now we have, if you look around, we have a lot of people, a lot of strangers that appear to be entering into the sanctuary of the Lord. But it just appears that they're entering in. They're not. They can sit there, they can cry, they can jump, they can shout and everything. But they're still not entering in to the sanctuary of the Lord. Because in the sanctuary of the Lord, there is change. In the sanctuary of the Lord, there's a rearranging. And a lot of times, people don't like that rearranging part. You know what I'm saying? Don't come in here moving furniture around. Come in here and do what you got to do and get on out of it. Nope. In the sanctuary of the Lord, I see it. There is change. Change takes place. So while the masses, oh, there's so many people that are Christians. That's fine to carry that name. It's fine. Amen. But there's only so many that are entering in now. One person can go to a sanctuary and use it as a place to get closer to the Lord. Another person can enter, go into the sanctuary and use it for a mating game. How many in this place can I mate? How many in this place can I get their phone number? You know what I'm saying? People use the sanctuary for all different types of things. Sad, but truth. Amen. Amen. And the Levites that are gone away far from me, when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offering. And a sacrifice for the people. And they shall stand before them to minister unto them. Because they minister unto them before their idols. And cause the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Therefore have I lifted up mine hand against them. Saith the Lord God. And they shall bear their iniquity. Verse 10 through 12. This is, this is the main reason why. It's very, very, very important to make sure that we make sure that we make sure that the leaders and the and the the those that are keepers that are set to keep the place and everybody appointed in the place has circumcised their hearts. It's very, very, very important. And these days, we treat, people treat God's house like it's a business. How to, how, and how is a business ran? A business is ran like this. Um, there may be one that is, 
have uh, in fornication, and, but they're your secretary. Well, that's really none of your business, and you really don't care that that secretary is in fornication. Why? Because you got a business to run. Um, there may be one that is uh, given to much wine and drugs. And because you got a business to run, you don't stop them from being uh, the mail carrier, right? You don't stop them from being um, the water boy. We don't stop them from being. We don't stop them from being anything. Why? Because the show got to go on. Because it's like a business. But when those that really meant God for real, these are the the and those that really mean God for real. These are the ones that make sure that the keeper is grounded. Make sure that the ushers are grounded. Make sure, okay, that the praise team is grounded. Make sure, make sure that the house of God is ran the best it can be ran by those that really mean God for real. Today, today, you want to talk about today? Have you seen today? Today, most often times, it's more so mm, whatever make the ship float. And it doesn't matter that the ship could be going to West Hell. It don't matter. As long as it look like it's floating and it look like it's doing good and it look like and it look like and people really are given to how it look. You would be surprised. How many people are given. To how it look. This is why people go buy expensive automobiles. Because how I look. I, 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 I look successful. People go get. Eight, nine, ten bedroom homes. Because of how it make me look. And they the only ones staying in it. I wish a homeless person might knock on the door and say uh, is there a place for me to sleep I wish because these days it we people are given to appearance why because eternity is not really being put in the forefront anymore they're not ministering about eternity anymore they're not talking about eternity anymore they're not talking about the lake of fire anymore well, as a matter of fact they're they're allowing the the dark the people of darkness to make the lake of fire and to make hell and to make demonic things look cool and so the only ones talking about hell is the devil and he's talking about it in a way where it ain't that bad you know there's so many people committing suicide these days because they believe it ain't that bad now most of them know where they're going but they the devil has been preaching hell so much to make it seem like it ain't that bad we had they got halloween coming up real soon and this make hell seem this makes hell seem like it ain't that bad why because you get candy on the evil day oh yay yay la 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 la. Oh, that, that's a monster. No, baby, it's not a monster. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. Demonic principalities and powers is okay. And we get candy. Yay. La la la. La la la. La la la. Holy Ghost, have your way today. Have your way today. All right. So verse 10 through 12 is talking about how people don't give a rip about who they put up to preach, to teach. It don't matter. As long as you're not going to step on my feet, you can get up and say what you want to say. But when if you if you think that you're going to rebuke me, if you think for a minute that you're going to come in that word, get in this word, and say anything that's going to hit me over the head. Nah. 
And this is an organization you see today. And might I add, I'm so thankful not to be a part of it. I'm so thankful not to be a part of the hypocrisy. I'm thankful not to be a part of the system. I'm thankful not to be indoctrinized. I'm thankful that I don't believe that I have to go up through a man to get ranking. (laughs) I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful that I don't feel like I have to go through a woman to get ranking with the Lord. I'm so thankful that I don't believe that I need a piece of paper to prove who I am and who the Lord says I am. I'm so thankful I'm so thankful. Look what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Because when I look, just sitting back and observing state after state, region after region, a lot of times leader after leader, You know what I see? I see a bunch of gatekeepers that came up under these folks. And they are not grounded in God. They can quote scriptures from kingdom come, but they are not grounded in God. Not in the least. Not in the least. These people have built their houses upon sand. And when the wind comes, and it will come, it's going to blow these houses down. One day, one day, I will have one that will speak what I am saying. One day, I will have one that's not indoctrinized. One day, I will have one that will read my word as it is. One day. One day. One day, I'm going to have one that fears me more than they fear man. One day. One day. One day, I have one that reverence me over their pastors, over their apostles, over their teachers, over their over their evangelists, and over their prophets. One day, one day, I'll have one to do it. One day. And they will bear fruit of their kind. And I'll raise up an army that will fight on my behalf, says the Lord. Verse 13. And they shall not come near unto me. It says the keepers of the house. We're talking about the keepers now. We're not talking about the legion. We're talking about the keepers. And most often times the keepers were once dedicated to God. The keepers were once because, see, the keeper has to be able to hold everything together. You understand? So the keeper, most oftentimes, verse 13, the keeper was once dedicated, once founded on the word, you know, and they know scripture and they had a relationship. But this is why that the leaders choose this keeper. But now that I have this keeper, now I have to groom this keeper. To be my keeper, not God's keeper, mine. You're not going to say this. If you see me in fault, you're not going to say it. You're not going to come through the word when it's when it's time. Uh, if the Lord tell you to say something and if I haven't revealed the revelation, you're not going to say anything. I'm going to rebuke you and I'm going to beat you. OK, these are the keepers now. So now the keepers have taken down a notch. 
okay, to be a keeper of a man's house instead of being a keeper in the, in the house of God. You understand? So now looking at the keepers, when you look at a keeper, you look at one that trusted my right hand man. Look at the right hand man real close. Look at him real close. Look at the right hand daughter of Zion real close. You look at him real close and you'll see somebody that used to be. You'll see somebody that used to have a backbone. And they shall not come near unto me and do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place. But they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. And many times keep the keepers are the leaders. Amen. Many times the keepers are the leaders. But then when the leaders leave, they appoint keepers as well. Amen. So this is a, it's a, it's a double. It's a double. My mind is going back to, thank you, Holy Ghost, Saul. The people wanted somebody over them. And the Lord was like, are you sure? They're like, pretty much they were saying, Lord, you're not good enough. We want somebody like us. We want a mortal. And anytime you believe that God is not good enough, that you want a mortal, you in, you in, you in for, you in for a rude, rude, rude awakening. Amen. Because a mortal in Galatians, we go over Galatians, they tell you everything that's inside of a mortal. Amen. Everything that's inside of each and every last one of our flesh. And it's not good. Amen. So the people chose, um, a king over the king of kings. And we don't want the king of kings, but just give us a king. What kind of stuff is that? What kind of stuff is that? They shall not come near unto me and do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place. But they shall bear their shame and their abomination, which they have committed. And I will, thank you, Holy Ghost, they shall bear their shame. But I will make them keepers of the charge. Excuse me, saints. Okay, we're still recording. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house of all the service thereof and for all that shall be done therein. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok that kept the charge of my sanctuary and the children of Israel went astray from me. They shall come near to me to minister unto me. And they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, said the Lord God. Verse 15. Phew. That's big, y'all. So the Lord is saying, I, you know, I am, I'm not going to let them come near unto me. Because of their abominations, I'm not going to let them come near unto me. I'm going to let the ones that kept the charge of my sanctuary, even though other people went astray, I'm going to let the ones that kept the charge of my sanctuary, I'm going to let them come near unto me. I'm going to let them minister to me. I'm going to let them stand before me. I'm going to let them offer unto me says the Lord they shall enter into my sanctuary and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me and they shall keep my charge saints how my question for you how do you minister to the Lord do you minister to the Lord Do you minister to the Lord? And if you do, how? How do you minister to the Lord? Do you know how to minister to the Lord? How? How do you minister? To the Lord. I just wrote a note. How do you minister to the Lord? 
He says, they shall enter into my sanctuary. And they shall come near to my table. Now, the table of the Lord. What do you believe is on the table of the Lord? These are things that I'm going to ask the Lord. And we're going to talk about it. Amen. What is on the table of the Lord? It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. What is on the table of the Lord? <laughs> Can you even imagine what's on the table of the Lord? Okay. How do you minister to the Lord? Now, off the top of the dome, we minister anytime we get up and we say, um, we, pre- we minister, we preach, we teach what the Lord has said. This is ministering back to the Lord. There are many, I can't even tell you how many times I have got up and uh, did what I do and got on pod bean. And when I, then I lay back down and while I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming of this individual, either they're talking to me or they're talking to someone else or they're preaching or they're, it, I, it, Countless and countless and countless of times I've went to sleep and I've heard them saying everything I just said in the pot bean. But they're saying it like it's them that's saying it. And I wake up like, whoa, what a confirmation. I just, We just talked about that on pot bean. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I can't tell you how many times, how many times and how many times and how many times this has happened. Where I go to sleep and I hear two people and they're saying everything I just said. Everything. Or they're telling me. But when they're telling me, it's like, it's really, they're really telling me. They're not telling me like they heard me say it. But they're telling me like, and I'm looking like, what? I just heard this. So one of the ways to minister to the Lord is... When we get up and say the things that he said, there's a way of ministering to him. Another way of ministering to him is in song. Another way to minister unto the Lord is with instruments. Mm -hmm. There are so many ways to minister unto the Lord. We don't really talk about ministering unto the Lord. Because a lot of times we are focused a lot on ministering to the people. You know what I'm saying? But when and where and how do we minister to the Lord? One of the ways of ministering to the Lord is... Presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. Let's look up the word minister. <clears throat> Time is going on, saints. You know we already we're already at the forty fifth hour. We're already at the forty fifth hour. It says, I don't know why this thing don't Minister. There you go. Good. Okay. It says, a member of the clergy, especially in Protestant churches. All right. In certain countries, it means a head of a government department. Um. Minister, this one, this, this is what I'm talking about. Attend to the needs of someone. All right. To minister is to attend to the needs of someone. That's what I'm talking about. And what does the Lord need today? 
in this time. He needs somebody that will pull aside and make themselves ready for his kingdom to come into the earth and for his will to be done in in earth as it is in heaven, right? So many times when we think of the word minister, we think of uh, speaking to people. But they're, they're to minister, all right, attend to the needs of someone. Another way to minister is um, to massage, you know, to massage and to massage someone and make those joints feel oh so good. That's another way of ministering. You can minister to them by relaxing them, right? Well, a massage, we can't physically massage the Lord, but we can massage his mind, the mind of Christ. We can mas- massage the mind of Christ by giving him praises for his excellency. Amen. We can massage the mind of the Lord by saying, Lord, look at the beautiful works that you have made. You are more than majestic. You are the supreme Lord God. I bow my complete being in the essence of who I am to who you are. Lord, I find it a delight to service you. I find it a privilege to be able to call you Abba is is more than a joy. It's it's a joy that can't be understood by the next person. How I feel when I come into your presence, when I begin to think about the things you've done for me, when I begin to think about who you are, Lord, when I begin to think of how kingly you are and how there's none above you, never have been, never will be, we begin to massage the mind of God and he leans in now to listen I want to know what you got to say about me you really feel like that about me I do Lord words in the English language and no other language can compare to how good I feel when I'm talking about you when I'm in your presence Lord when I'm thinking about you, words can't even describe. I think I'll just shed some tears to let you see how I really feel. To minister to the Lord. Brings us to the table of the Lord. Where the feast is spread. What is on this table? We're going to go on down. And there's a part of this scripture that I really, really, really love. And I pray we get to it. We're on the 49th minute. All right. They shall enter into my sanctuary. And they shall come near to my table to minister unto me. And they shall keep my charge. All right. Most oftentimes we're singing praises of another man. We don't have time to minister to God because we're singing praises to this man. And we're singing praises to this woman. Oh, woman of God. Oh, man of God. Woman of God. When the last time you ministered to the Lord? When's the last time? When is the last time, beloved? Okay. So, 17. And it shall come to pass. That when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments. All right. They shall be clothed with linen garments. I believe we're going to take some time on the outer court, the inner court, and the holies of holies. I believe we're going to, we're going to um, push the brakes. We're going to push the brakes. Lord, Lord's willing. Lord say the same. We're going to push the brakes on this. And we're going to take our time and talk about it. Amen. So I'm not going to just let it be done and over with today. But we really need to understand about the outer court, the inner courts, the holies of holies. Ezekiel is not the only book that talks about it. But it's the first one the Lord Lord gave me. Amen. Uh, They shall enter into my sanctuary and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me. 
and they shall keep my charge. All right. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments. All right. So it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court. All right. Inner court. If you're marking your Bibles, you can underline the word inner court or you can highlight. All right. The word inner court. But the Bible says, and it comes to pass, that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments. Now, I can tell that most oftentimes these church houses today are not the inner court. All right. Because there are many they enter in with all type of stuff on. And you know what people are telling them? It's okay. Leaders are telling them, it's okay. Now, when you got a babe that's coming out the street, that's different. But somewhere, we got to go back to our first love. And if we can dress up for a concert, surely we can put on something to come into the house of God. Surely. It is still the house of God, right? And to, 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 to dial it on down, we are the temples of the Most High. So shouldn't we ourselves be, be dressed in a In a way, as an ambassador to represent. Some people say that, hey, you're taking it too far. I say, um, I'm just right where we need to be. Aware of who we are. Knowing who we are. Receiving who we are. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are times people can't even receive you because you don't receive yourself. Do you receive yourself? Do you receive who God has made you? When you are receptive, somebody else can be receptive. Amen. And you are royalty. You are an ambassador for the Lord. You're not from here. And because you're not from here, it should reflect. Because we're not from here, it should reflect who we are, what we do, how we look, where we go. And it shall come to pass that when they enter into the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments, and no wool shall come upon them whilst they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causes sweat. Why? Because the Lord says... Take my yoke upon you and learn of me because it's, 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 it, the yoke is easy and the burden is light. But the burden of the enemy, that's what's heavy. It causes sweat and toil. There's a man that said he went to hell and hell was breathing like a tired man. If you look at it in the beginning, Adam exited the holy place and he entered hell. Now, you have to be following us a while. To understand what I just said. Adam. He exited the holy place. And he entered into hell. Hell. Yes. You have to. And he was cursed. You're going to work by the sweat of your brow. You're going to work by the sweat of your brow. So the Lord is saying. In this in this verse. That I don't want you to. I don't want you to, to be given too much sweat. It shall come to pass that when they enter into the gates, they shall have linen garments. And no wool shall come upon them whilst they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. And this is just to represent that this, this, this right here has nothing to do with hell. Right? This is total, this is a total opposite of hell. You're not a tired man. You know what I'm saying? You're not a tired man. Um. Yeah. You know, not a tired man. Um, you may say, so everybody that works by the sweat of the brow is, is hell and this and that, this and that. Well, I tell you what, those things, the, uh, a message like that, I would have to bring to you 
when you can see me. You understand? Like on Podbean, something like that, of that magnitude, I would definitely be on camera when I explain that to you. Amen? About how we have... The, Lord, the way the Lord gave it to me and the revelation the Lord gave me about hell is not what we've been thinking for years. It's not. We've been thinking hell to be, um, and hell is a place, but what place are you in right now in your life? What place are you in? Well, I'm in a place of knowing for knowing God for myself. Okay, that's a good place to be in. You definitely want to take your time in that place. Okay, what place are you in, man of God? Uh, I'm in the place of trying to see, does the Lord really want me to be married or does he want me to just dedicate myself to him? Okay, man of God, that's a, that's, that's a place you need to take your time in as well because you definitely don't want to get hitched up with the wrong one. She will pull you down. Amen. She will pull you all the way down or daughter of Zion. You definitely don't want to get hooked up to the wrong one. I'm telling you, he will pull you all the way down. Amen. So that's a place in your life that you might want to take some time with. You know, some places in life we can zoom through, but then there's other places in life you're like, uh, hold on. Because this, this can determine whether I'm in heaven, my home or not. You understand? So hell is a place as well. Hell. And a lot of times we think that it's several, several, several miles beneath the earth. But hell. And am I explaining it right now on Podbean? You see this? But hell is, I believe, it's like uh, Brother Ramirez said. It's like a tired man that's breathing. Hell. I think hell is a place where every dime you make, you got to spend it back out to pay bills. You know what I'm saying? And when Jesus went to hell and spent three days in it, amen, he came back up. Okay, from that holding place. Now, today, the Bible says that there's an appointed time where hell will be cast into the lake of fire, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, that's the lake of fire. Hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire. That means hell ain't went to hell yet. Because when we talk about hell, that's what we think hell is. You and I think hell is the lake of fire, and it's not. Hell is not the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the lake of fire. And hell is going to be cast into the lake of fire along with Satan. Amen. They're going to be cast into the lake of fire. And so this is why the devil can make people feel like hell ain't so bad. You know what I'm saying? Because in hell, hey, you can still go do this and still go do that. Because the judgment hadn't came yet. You know what I'm saying? I know you probably don't because, you know, it's something that has to be taken time and talked about. Amen. But saints, look, we're not, fret not, we're going to come back and talk about the outer court, the inner court, the holies of holies. I've learned something new today. Amen. And until next time, be blessed. In Jesus' name. Amen.